مر الزمان تألقا وأضاء للدنيا طريقا مشرقا وهدى من الرحمن يهدينا به للصالحات وللمكارم والتقى هذا كتاب الله أعذب من هل أنعم به من مورد لمن استقى قد صانه رب العباد بحفظه وحماه حتى لا يضيع ويخلقا طوبى لمن حفظ الكتاب بصدره فبدا وضيئا كالنجوم تألقا وتمثل القرآن في أخلاقه وفعاله فيه الفؤاد تعلقا وتلاه في جنح الدجا متدبرا والدمع من بين الجفون ترقرقا هذه صفات الحافظين كتابه حقا فكن بصفاتهم متخلقا. This is the Quran you talk uh, number five by Allah's favors and blessings. We talked last time about the wisdom behind revealing the Quran in parts, not as in, in uh, one time as the Torah or the Injil and the other heavenly scriptures that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent in the past before the Quran. And we talked about the wisdom uh, in regard to the Prophet specifically, which is strengthening the heart of the Prophet and we said that there are also a lot of, a lot of uh, benefits and, and a lot of wisdom in revealing the Quran in parts also to the Muslims. There was and there were so many benefits for the Muslims, not only the Muslims who were in the time of the Prophet As we will see now, inshallah, but also there are so many benefits for us to learn and so many lessons to, to follow. So the other ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, as we read in the in Salah, Surah Isra, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَبِالْحَقِّ أَنزَلْنَاهُ وَبِالْحَقِّ نَزَلْ وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا مُبَشِّرًا وَنَذِيرًا With the truth, we sent this Qur'an. We sent it down with the truth and to establish the truth and it did. And it was preserved and protected from any change. And we did not send you except as a bearer of the glad tidings, the good news, the happy news, and a warning. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَقُرْآنًا فَرَقْنَاهُ لِتَقْرَأَهُ عَلَى النَّاسِ عَلَى مُكْفِ وَنَزَّلْنَاهُ تَنْزِيلًا And we have given you a Qur'an. Or it is a Qur'an that we have revealed in parts and we took it فَرَضْنَاهُ as Imam Ibn Kathir said we took it from Allah Al-Mahfud and put it in the house of the glory in the lower heaven then it was revealed according to the occasions over 23 years we revealed it in parts, in portions, in different periods of time why? لِتَضْرَأَهُ عَلَى النَّاسِ عَلَى مُكْفِ means to recite it to people in slow way, slowly, at intervals, not at once, so that they can memorize it, they can understand it, they can implement it. And we did send it in stages, in successive stages over uh, the period of time that we mentioned, 23 years. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here, we did this so that you recite it to people slowly. So here we have two main, two main uh, benefits. Number one, to make it easy for the Arabs to memorize it. Why? Because the Arabs, as we know, they were illiterate. And there were very few number of Muslims in the time of the Prophet وسلم, who knew how to read and write. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of his great wisdom and mercy and blessings to this ummah 
is that he revealed the Quran gradually in steps so that these people who did not know how to read and write their main reliance was on their memory, on their hafal so it was very easy for them so many of them would memorize the ayat many ahadith as we will see inshallah in the coming talks the Sahabi will say I learned from the mouth of the Prophet وسلم, this surah and that surah we learned from the Prophet this and this وسلم. this is in many ahadith so this is the main the, the, the first point that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the Quran uh, in to be revealed in part so that these people can memorize it and can reflect on it. Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu as Imam uh, Tabari mentions in his tafsir, he said that Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud said we used to get the Quran 10, uh, ten ayat by 10 ayat. We used to get it 10 ayat by 10 ayat. We take these 10 ayat, we read them, we understand them, and we implement them. Then we move to the next 10 ayat. So we learned the Quran and the, the uh, implementation of the Quran at the same time. Allahu Akbar. This is how the Quran should be read, dear brothers and sisters. It's, the Quran is not meant just to recite it and uh, and also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as, as this ayah says so that you recite it to people slowly and this is particularly to, to our dear Khufar who uh, whenever they want to recite they, they just want to read very very quickly what? this is not how the Quran should be read this is not how the Quran Allah said Allah said ala muk slowly because there is a purpose the, recite, the recitation of the Quran is not meant by itself it is meant for reflection, for understanding. So, this is how they got the Quran. And this is why we find so a huge difference between those great Sahaba and ourselves. One ayah will be enough for them. Ten ayat will change all, all of their lives. But may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. We read and read, but it seems we are not doing what they were doing. We have to follow the same recipe, the same steps that they used to do. The second, the second point which is very important for us is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed it so that in, in parts and over this long period of time so that they can implement it. So that they can act upon it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want to overburden people. The Arabs, they used to drink a lot. They used to be uncontrolled by any system killing they would fight many tribes would fight for a horse for years they used to have uh, the issue of revenge the issue of uh, tribalism and tribal uh, protection and these issues they used to bury some of some of them used to bury their daughters alive they used to eat the, the blood they used to eat the, the dead animals all this is mentioned in the quran this type of people how you're gonna how are you going to change them? They say uh, in, in, in the Arabic proverb, they say Changing the habit is harder than, than cutting with swords. It's not an easy to change a habit. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this type of people and out of his great wisdom, he started revealing the ayat that tells them and teaches them about tawheed about worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone without any partner with him, without associating any partner with him because he is the only one who deserves worship. He is the only Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the only cherisher, foster, sustainer, maintainer of the worlds subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reveal many ayat telling them the proofs about Tawheed. The, the signs about Tawheed. أَفَلَا يَنظُرُونَ إِلَى الْإِبْدِ كَيْفَ خُلِقَتْ وَإِلَى السَّمَاءِ كَيْفَ رُفِعَتْ Don't they look at the camels, how they were created, at the skies, how they were raised, at the mountains, at the, etc, etc. So many ayat in all the Meccan era, more than 12 years, there was no halal and haram. There was no khamr is haram. There was no fasting. There was no zakah. In all the Meccan era, there was no, no zakah, no fasting. Even salah, it was uh, prescribed at the end of the Meccan 
era. Why is this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with His great wisdom, He wanted to implant the faith in their hearts first. And look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used to talk to them about the things that they see. Don't they look at the camel? If we talk about this ayah particularly, you will find so many miracles in the creation of the camel because they know the camel more than we do. So they know how much the, the characteristics that the camel has. So Allah talked to them in many ways, in many proofs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to uh, uh, put the love in their hearts, to strengthen their faith, to get rid of those uh, false beliefs gradually, step by step. Telling them about paradise, telling them about the hellfire, giving them glad tidings if they obey, warning them if they if they don't, uh, disobey, reminding them of the of the countless bounties. All these topics we will mention, inshallah, later on. These are the the, the, the headlines of the Mecca surah, the surah that was revealed before the hijrah of the Prophet And this is the the purpose of this. Then the rules started bit by bit. And Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu anha put this in a very nice words as Imam al-Bukhari narrated radiallahu anhu. She said that from among the early ayat or suwar that was revealed, the suwar that talks, the short suwar, the short suwar that talk about Jannah and Nar, paradise and the hellfire. And she said, then when people reverted to Islam, when people reverted to Islam, what does that mean? Because they were born as Muslims. And this is why this is a good, yeah, it's a correct name to say for the new Muslims, they are revert. Because they came back to their nature, to their original faith, to Islam. So she said, Hatta idha thaba nasu ila Islam. So that when people reverted to Islam, then the halal and the haram came. When people regained their belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the creator, as the, the only one who controls everything, and consequently the only one who deserves worship, then the halal and haram came down. And once uh, the ahkam was revealed, they were running and rushing to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not like now many Muslims, they don't uh, obey the rules because they did not, they did not reflect enough on those ayat, on the, on the, on the belief, on the, uh, the, the faith did not enter the heart yet, it's still weak, this is why they don't follow, they don't obey. Then she said, radiallahu anha, our mother, radiallahu anha, Sayyidina Aisha, she said, if, in the same hadith, she said, and if it was revealed in the beginning that, do not drink wine, they would have said, we, will, we cannot, we will not do it. And if it was revealed right from the beginning that do not commit fornication or adultery, they would have said, we will not do it, we cannot quit. So see Allah's mercy subhanahu wa ta'ala, see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wisdom, how He took it very gradually, very slowly, and now the lesson is for us, dear brothers and sisters. We have so many non-Muslims around us. How are we calling to Islam? How, how are we presenting the Quran to them? There are some of us, may Allah forgive us. When we explain Islam to someone, we, we, we bring all the halal and the haram and all the fatah books and the fatah issues. And here you go, this is Islam. He, how can he accept? SubhanAllah. How can they accept? They will never accept. So we have to take it very gradually. Don't tell him, Yalla, you have to quit drinking wine, you have to uh, quit any relations with girls, then, then come to Islam. How can we do that? Wallahi, I, I warn myself and I remind my dear brothers and sisters, be aware when you make da'wah and be careful. Maybe you will be the reason of pushing someone away from Islam. You have to learn how to do it. It's not chaotic, it's not like there is a sunnah, there is a way, the way of graduation that our beloved وسلم, taught us and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before his Prophet وسلم, taught us and favored us with subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, Sayyidina uh, Mu'adh radiallahu anhu, he explained 
and he, uh, we learn from his hadith another similar thing also in Sahih al-Bukhari when the Prophet ﷺ sent him to Yemen. He's sending him to make da'wah. What did he tell him? Reflect on this hadith. It's an amazing hadith. He said to him, O oh, Mu'ad, you're going to meet people of the book, some of the people of the book, of the scripture, means Jews and Christians. Okay, what should I do? He said, if you come to them, call them to the testimony to believe that to believe that there is none worthy of worship but Allah and that Muhammad وسلم, is Rasulullah. Call them for this. Then what? Then he said, if they respond to you, then tell them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribe on them five daily prayers. Then if they respond to you, tell them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribe charity that should be taken from their rich, from the rich among them and be given to the poor. If they responded to you in this, beware, do not take the best of their properties. And beware of the supplication of the oppressed ones because there is no veil between it and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means it will be responded to by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will be answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is what do we, what, what uh, more eloquence and more clarity do we need than this? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is the best teacher, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is how we should call the, the non-Muslim uh, brothers and sisters. They are our brothers and sisters in humanity. We all come from the same father, Adam alayhi salam, from the same mother, Eve alayhi salam, Hawa alayhi salam. But once, I will finish with this uh, short uh, incident that took place. The father of our Sheikh in, in Syria, once he knew someone who is not brave at all. He is a Muslim. So he talked to him and he convinced him to brave Wuhr, uh, Asr, and Maghrib. And he told him, Oh Shaykh, Fajr, it's very difficult for me. I cannot wake up. Aisha, I come back, uh, I come back home from uh, work very tired. I just sleep. I cannot. The Shaykh told him, Okay, no problem now. Start with Wuhr, Asr, and Maghrib. Allahu Akbar. Then when the Shaykhs heard about this, Allahu Akbar, they made a war against the Shaykh. Oh, he is compromising Salah. He is compromising the thing. The Shaykh went to them and talked to them. He said, By Allah's favor, I was able to convince him to pray three prayers and gradually, inshallah, he will pray the, the other two. Why you don't help me to let him do the other two, the remaining two, better than attacking me? And, and so, subhanAllah, there is a great, great wisdom and great way we have to follow. Finally, uh, the last group of wisdoms or reasons behind revealing the Quranic portion is strengthening the hearts of the Sahaba as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling the stories of the previous nations, previous peoples also to strengthen the hearts of the Sahaba, to make them uh, be steadfast on the belief. You know how much they suffered, you know how they put them in the desert, they put the rocks over them, they you know how they killed them, you know how they killed Sayyidina Sumayya bin Tulkhayyad, the first martyr in Islam. You know how they tortured Sayyidina Ammar bin Yasir and, and his father. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed so many ayahs in parts also to strengthen their hearts. Also in answer to their questions, more than 10 times in the Quran, Allah says, they ask you about this, they ask you about this, and the answer came. Also uh, in this, there are so many prophecies the Quran mentioned. Telling them about the, the future events that will come. Telling them about, about some mistakes that they did. So, so many wisdoms we cannot uh, finish them in, in this short talk. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, make us of those who listen to the speech and follow its best. After all this, the miracle, dear brothers and sisters, despite revealing the Quran in this long period of time, Different times, different places, different occasions, different reasons. Look at the Quran. When you read it, it is one harmonious, perfect piece. It is one harmonious book that you find it very coherent, very cohesive. 
as if it was just uh, put in, in an amazing order that no human being can bring a similar to it as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُ فِيهِ اِخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا If it was from other than Allah, they would have found a lot of discrepancy and contradiction in it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us benefit from the Qur'an. صلى الله عليه سيدنا محمد الحمد لله وآمين يا حافظ القرآن رات الآيه فالكل أنصت للتلاوة مطرقا يا حافظ القرآن لست بحافظ حتى تكون لما حفظت مطبقا ماذا يفيدك أن تسمى حافظا وكتاب ربك في الفؤاد تمزقا فتمسكي بعراه كي لا نغرقا ولتجمعي حول الكتاب شتاتنا حتى نزيل تناحرا وتفرقا ولتجعلي محكما في أمرنا وثقي بوعد الله أن يتحققا يا أمتي القرآن حبل فتمسكي بعراه كي لا نغرق